I am incredibly excited to be here to talk about a project that I've been passionate about for the last two years. I teach at a school that has a mission of civic engagement. And I was asking myself about two years ago, how can I incorporate this mission of civic engagement into the mathematics classroom, especially into my eighth grade region's algebra class? And I asked myself, how can I have my students examine issues of social justice through the lens of mathematics? And about that time, I had watched a documentary called Living on One. It's about a group of college students who travel to rural Guatemala to experience what it's like to live on only $1 a day. And they see the issues that people who live on $1 a day face. And what was appealing about the documentary is that it's broken into episodes that are about five to six minutes long. That seemed like they would be a really great launch for an investigation of the mathematics related to these issues. I specifically thought about the unit on inequalities and how this constraint of living on only one dollar a day would be interesting to investigate mathematically as well. The first lesson we looked at was based on the episode Hunger and Tortillas. And we were looking at the, how issues of diet and nutrition are affected by the constraint of only having one dollar per day to spend. And this was a clip from the first video that we watched. One and a half pounds of black beans gives us 1,600 calories. One and a half pounds of yellow rice gives us 2,000 roughly, but still like 3,600 calories split amongst four people is not good enough for our daily value. With just one bag of yellow rice, one bag of black beans, and a few bananas for the week, we're eating only one third of the food we should be. Is there any way we could afford more food on our dollar a day budget? My students come from a really diverse set of backgrounds. Um, a portion of my students are West African immigrants. Some of my students are Dominican, Puerto Rican, African American. And what struck me after we watched this video was that students were making connections to this. And I had students saying, this is interesting because the country that my family comes from, people eat beans and rice as part of their diet there too. And their classmate whose family comes from across the world was making this same remark. And students started to wonder what is special about rice and beans that makes them such a common food. And we looked at data about the price and the calories of rice and beans. And students modeled this with a linear inequality. And this was actually the first time that they had seen an inequality in two variables. So they were conceptualizing for the first time what a solution looks like that's actually a combination, and in this case, a combination of beans and rice. And students found that, yes, it is actually possible to satisfy both of these inequalities um, if your solution is heavily based on rice. So we push this a little bit more. Well, the most nutritious ratio, it turns out, of beans and rice is a one-to-one -one ratio. So students looked at, well, is it possible to satisfy these inequalities with a one-to-one -one ratio of beans and rice? And this was where students really had an aha moment because it's not, in fact, possible to satisfy both of these inequalities. So the reality for a person who has this mathematical inequality as a part of their life of a constraint of $1 a day is that they have to make a choice between calories and nutrition. But we continued to push this further. What about all the foods that we eat every day? We thought about chicken and tomatoes and apples, foods that we know are, have nutritional value. And students looked at the calories per dollar ratio. And they saw that it's actually virtually impossible to satisfy your calories and be able to purchase these foods on only a dollar per day. And so this mathematical inequality was creating really a global inequality of health and nutrition. And the video connects to this by talking about acute malnutrition where you just don't have enough calories versus chronic malnutrition where the calories you're consuming just don't have the nutrients and the vitamins that you need and how that really affects the health 
of the people who are living under this mathematical constraint. The next lesson that we looked at was examining access to clean water. And the video episode was called Water from a Pipe. Students were able to make an interdisciplinary connection here because their eighth grade science class was looking at scarcity of fresh water across the world. And in their reading class, they actually had read A Long Walk to Water. So they were familiar with the human impact of this issue. And they had even been looking in science class at some of the technologies that are available to bring clean water to communities that don't have access to it. So instead of focusing on the issue this time, we thought about what can we do as a classroom community to try to help, to try to address this problem. So we looked at some of the widely available technologies that are not too expensive and that are portable. We looked at life straws and ceramic bucket filters. And students set a target goal of fundraising $100. And they created in groups, some groups worked on an inequality to look at. If we raised $100, what combinations of items would we be able to donate? So they graphed this inequality. And they had seen graphs of linear inequalities before, but they hadn't done this in context. So this was the first time that they saw that shaded region and solution set as something that meant something. It meant that we could actually purchase these items, this combination of items. And they were able to examine what combinations we could purchase. Other groups looked at, well, if we wanted a goal of providing water for three families for a year, assuming that a family would use about 2,000 gallons of water per year, then what combinations would we need to purchase in order to be able to provide that. So they saw their solution set as that shaded region as well. And what was really powerful was that students then sat down at a round table discussion with the other groups and they looked at their solution sets together. And they hadn't ever explicitly done systems of inequalities, but they started to conceptualize what it meant for a combination to be in the shaded region of both and how that impacted what we were going to do in our fundraising. Then they became ambassadors to our community. So they raised awareness about this cause, but now instead of just raising awareness about it as an issue, they were able to bring to that the evidence that they had from the mathematics they had done. And to be able to communicate it in that way was really empowering because it gave them that specific data to talk about. <coughs> so what's next is there are four more videos, which means four more lessons. But what I'm particularly excited about is that at the end of the year, students will do a culminating project where they're going to choose an issue from the videos to examine mathematically and then present to the class. This is a work in progress. And after this presentation, I'm going to upload these lessons onto the Small World Network because what's really amazing about Math for America is having talented and thoughtful educators in this community. And I would love to invite anyone who's interested to collaborate on this project and to continue to think about this and how we can inspire our students to examine issues like global inequality and issues of social justice through the lens of mathematics. Thank you.